So for this question then, we're asked to state one limitation of the model that could affect the answer in part B. Well, what I've done is I've actually copied out the answers that are given in the mark scheme. So I'll just run through what they are. And that is that the target will have dimension. So in practice, there would be a range of possible values of angle alpha. That's because, remember, the ball was projected, say, from a point A. It traveled along to a target, which was T. And we took that target as a point. So when this was projected with a speed U at an angle alpha here, OK, that angle alpha could vary if that target were a lot wider. OK, it could be much higher up here. OK, so it reaches just the top of the target or it could be slightly lower. OK, slightly smaller. So it reaches the bottom of the target. So that's the reason behind that first one. You could have that there'll be air resistance. It seems normal that there would be air resistance. So that's going to alter the trajectory. OK, so we'd have to alter that angle alpha to accommodate that. The ball, remember, has dimension. So that, too, is going to affect angle alpha. We're not taking it as a point, OK, a particle, if you like, but a uh, just a simple point. There could be effects from the wind that blows it off course. Or even the spin of the ball. When you spin a ball, that can make the ball curve in a different direction. So there we are. They're the limitations that examiners have written down in their mark scheme that could affect the answer then in part B.